appreciate your contributions to education and the profound impact you've made on your students' lives. Thank you for your unwavering commitment and for being an exceptional role model. In a note to the spirit of education and lifelong learning, we would like to kick off today's celebration with a panel discussion titled Challenges in Teaching in Classrooms in the Modern Era. The panelists for today are Professor Supreet Singh Bhaga from Mechanical Department. Professor Bhaga heads the IIT Delhi Macro and Nanofluidics Group and has also received the Faculty Research Award in 2024 and the IIT Delhi Teaching Excellence Award in 2017. He also completed his undergrad from IIT Bombay, which gives him a unique perspective as both a student and professor in the IIT system. Our second panelist for today is Professor Ravinder Kaur, Professor of Sociology and Social Anthropology in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. Professor Kaur is also a recipient of the IIT Delhi Teaching Excellence Award uh, in 2011. She is also a convener and founding member of the Initiative for Gender Equity and Sensitization, IGES, at IIT Delhi and is currently co-PI in a project on gender and STEM. We welcome you as our panelists today. So if you could please come onto the stage. And, uh, this also leads to a diversity in the classroom that hasn't been seen before. Uh, since attention is divided, it also raises the question that what kind of a student should the face of the lecture be sent to? And what should be the ideal class test? So I would like to ask this question to Professor Gore. Um, thank you, Shreya, and thank you for all the nice things you said about teachers. So we hope we can live up to that uh, long model image. And so, and thanks for the question. I think it is of great concern to me, uh, especially as a social anthropologist coming at the coming at it towards the perspective of diversity. As you said, diversity is grown by leaps and bounds. Gender, caste, uh, rural urban backgrounds, uh, you know, all kinds, English preparedness, preparedness for the IIT syllabus. So we have a far more diverse uh, student body than we have ever had. And, but I would say that, you know, many of my colleagues, especially from the engineering and sciences, would think, uh, why should I think about diversity in the classroom? I'm a professor of, you know, electrical engineering or something, and I am going to deliver this knowledge or content, and so I'm going to go and give my lecture, irrespective of who's in the classroom. In fact, they would think that this is the fair way to do things not to look at the diversity in the classroom, which is an old debate in philosophy whether one should acknowledge it or not acknowledge it. Uh, but I think uh, we can no longer avoid understanding the diversity in our classroom and being sensitive towards <coughs> it. I would like to you know, just say a few words that we, one can take inspiration from the Finland school system, education system. They've done a lot of experimentation, they've done a lot of research, and they came around to the view that the classroom lecture or teaching should pitch to the middle. And uh, not to the top, you know, maybe the top will take care of itself in any case. The bottom will require extra help, they're very clear about that. Mm -hmm. And they put resources into that and not towards you know everybody but the middle the research found that the middle actually gains the most through classroom teaching they are able to improve uh, from wherever they were so i think that's a good lesson to take and i feel that you know this is like our large numbers belong to that middle and we should if we aim at them and I am also one of those, you know, we are sitting in the north, we are sitting in Delhi. Yes, we have students from the south, we have to be sensitive. But I think to some extent in this uh, class, uh, classroom, uh, bilingualism also can work. And I think people have to be sensitive towards the different identities people are bringing to the classroom and the different levels of, uh, of the ability to access the teaching that we are uh, that, that we are giving. So I would say, and you know, I would say that maybe the classroom size ideally should be 30 to 40 students. More than that, um, that 
aspect of interaction is gone. Finally, just to say, it's the teachers, it's the owners of the teacher to create produce the, the classroom as a safe space where everybody can sort of raise their questions, speak out, etc. I think that makes a lot of sense. And if I could also have the students perspective on this. Hello. First of all, happy Teachers Day, everyone. And uh, I totally agree with what uh, Prof. Kaur said about you know catering to the students, uh, to, uh, to the so-called average students. Because what we see uh, happening a lot of times in classrooms is uh, the average students sort of get alienated from what's happening since uh, the pace is set too fast. And as a result, students get disinterested in the course itself, and they. Uh, you know, start preparing, uh, start learning that course only from an examination point of view. And therefore, it's uh, actually very important to sort of take regular feedback from students as well, so that we know whether they feel that the pace is too high or, th or the pace is too low. And uh, as for classroom size as well, uh, we under even students understand that, you know, there are a lot of uh, students in a classroom, if the classroom size is large, then it becomes very difficult to cater to most students. Which is why uh, students also uh, like when classroom sizes are smaller, so that first of all they can also ask the, uh, their doubts, they can, uh, they can discuss their uh, problems with the teacher, uh, with the professor, and they can also uh, understand and absorb the material more. So, yeah. Right. And I think, um, you know, the teacher-student gap as well as the importance of course feedback is also something that we're going to touch upon later on in the discussion. But for now, you know, another thing that has happened of late is the, you know, pro proliferation of technology in different domains. So what happens is that there are a lot of resources that are available online. And you have a lot of, you know, AI-based models that are also present that in education. Along with that, with the advent of like personal gadgets, mm -hmm. students' attention spans have also reduced. So, uh, you know, it would be very interesting to know how that has impacted the classroom. And this is something that yeah. I think. Uh, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, I want to uh, wish my colleagues a happy uh, Teachers' Day and uh, particularly congratulate the uh, Teaching Excellence Award for this year. So uh, that's a, a very pertinent question. And uh, we keep on hearing that you know, we need to incorporate technology in education and certainly technology has its uh, benefits because uh, you have uh, access to a wealth of uh, information, there are lots of uh, online coursework uh, available, lots of resources, students can do self-paced learning, uh, you can also have uh, captions where, uh, of videos which can be translated in uh, real time for you if you are not uh, familiar with that particular language and in, in particular um, channels like Swayam Prabha on TV and NPTEL have uh, made education more accessible for the masses and there's no doubt uh, about this. I've particularly benefited myself because now it's very easy to pick up new skills. I learned the latest version of a CAD software. I wanted to upgrade myself. I learned some few programming languages because these are the technical skills you, you can learn at, self, uh, at your own pace sitting at home. You don't need to go to a college for these things. But at the same time, uh, I also feel uh, that technology has its drawbacks. And uh, here, uh, I want to make a case that it ha the drawbacks actually outweigh the benefits. And uh, in a way, we've seen that during COVID uh, period. So the primary uh, drawback of uh, technology is the continuous and needless distraction. And we see that uh, in study groups and uh, during lectures, a single notif notification okay, from your messaging app can disrupt your thought process. And, uh, and it's not that, uh, and people think, oh, it's, it's just a 30 second video that I'll watch. But that th 30 second video will now take you 15 or 20 minutes more to recover and get back into your, the flow of your study. And you're so used to uh, these you know, small 
uh, bites of information that you lose your attention span. So over over time, what happens, uh, I feel, uh, is uh, that you you keep on getting uh, absorbing this needless uh, information, which is not helping you becoming better at your discipline. And then uh, it, it's like it's like fast food for your. Uh, brain, and then it eventually affects your critical thinking because your you can say your subconscious mind is unable to uh, absorb and you know uh, process and organize your thoughts. And then we see that students say, "Oh, I studied, but I still couldn't solve the problem. I knew, but somehow I couldn't solve uh, the problem." So what happens is we have students who have uh, less patience, less focus, reduced attention span. So despite wealth of information available online, you have MIT course, so you have NPTEL, you have so many courses or video lectures. The question that uh, I want to ask, and we can answer, uh, we can think uh, whether, uh, what the answer is, that have the learning outcomes improved with access to this, this technology? My, my point is that it has not, because the distractions are more than the benefits. Okay, so, uh, it, it's like you have 100 books available at a click of a button for you, but I would suggest at least finish one book. And if you don't have that focus, you won't be able to complete that. Book. And it, it doesn't need much to master a particular subject. One book is uh, sufficient. Okay, so that's one thing. I mean, I, I, I want to give an analogy. Okay, athletes control the diet to have the bodies in shape for the final Olympic race, for example. Okay, we are in knowledge work. Okay. And we are consuming this fast food in form of this bite-sized information. Okay. And are we really training our mind? So training your mind one day before the exam is not going to help. Okay. So that is why I think it, it, it's like it's like a fast food chain which is offer, also offering you a salad. Okay. So even though you want to have that salad, you are tempted to do other things. Okay. That that's one thing, the distraction part. And just one last point I want to touch, which I feel. Uh, over these years I've seen among students is that um, with this online coursework and also access to lectures available online, students are asking whether I should come to the class. Some uh, students also watch these lectures online, always hooked on, on their phones. Uh, I think the interpersonal skills have reduced, they've lost empathy for their classmates. We know that students are not even aware of the issues their peers are facing in the hostels. So, we should take some steps that uh, we uh, educate uh, students and even uh, teachers how we can uh, make the best use of technology. And but as of now, I think the drawbacks outweigh the benefits. Yeah, I think I do understand about this. Students also have a slightly different perspective. Hello, everybody. Ah. Uh, First of all, very happy Teachers' Day. I think it's the perfect opportunity for me to wish so many teachers in advance. So I think Professor Khan was really correct in pointing out the fact that distractions have, to a great extent, outweighed the advantages of technology, right? Um, and I think it's a very pertinent question to answer that how can we modify the classrooms, as the topic even suggests, uh, in order to utilize technology in a manner that the the drawbacks of these distractions are reduced to a great extent. So, as Professor Bagman has like literally covered too many things of how technology is advantageous, we have like MIT course, NPTEL courses that are available with IT Delhi professors teaching their so excellent theory. So, at that point in time, I think what can nudge a student to actually go and attend classes is to integrate the technology. I think. The reason is very simple, right? We cannot exactly remove technology. We can, I think in an ideal world, probably we can go ahead and tell the students to probably refrain from using technology, etc. But in a realistic scenario, it's not really possible. So in that case, I think the only way that we can come out of this thing, that is to say that we can improve the learning curve, is through integration of technology and the classrooms. I think. Uh, that is what a student should feel uh, in general. I think that is what I strongly feel. So I think I think the ways of it are quite simple. I will give you a very small example of how I an assignment where I had to integrate chat GPT into my assignment, right? And I think that is something very interesting. I can use chat GPT, for chat GPT cannot be the assignment for me because it's not that trivial, and I have to now integrate chat GPT.
community in my cycle trade. So, um, I think we can be asked to solve problems which are like more critical in nature, some things which probably elements or in general YouTube videos which are like on basic concepts cannot solve, yet they can help us accelerate those. Uh, the learning curve and the learning process. I think that is how we can improve the learning outcomes in general from a student's perspective at least. Um, what we believe is that in general, we have many courses, many resources in general available. We have instant doubt solving. And I think those are the things that we can use to accelerate learning curve. At the same time, we can, the classrooms in general can nudge us for like assignments, critical assignments, projects, uh, things that I think an idea should ideally be good at doing in general, right? So I think yes, uh, I believe in a problem that probably is not instantaneously possible, but in some time we start gradually integrating technology to a very large extent than it is really right now. I think that I think that answers the question. Yeah, I think it does. So it was very interesting for me to see like both sides of the perspective. As a student, I mainly seen the student side of the thing. It was, uh, you know, it was pretty interesting to think about how, you know, this technology does this matter on a daily basis. But I think one thing that both the previous questions were sort of indicating that we are yet to address is this professor-student gap that is there these days, where you know there is a gap between this, what students think is important to them and what professors feel should be important to students. For example, participation in clubs, internships, you know, time investment in courses, etc. So how do you think that we can bridge the gap in the question you uh, Thank you, Shreya. Um, I think, you know, it's important to understand to put the two perspectives together. You said this is what students want to do and this is what student, uh, teachers expect them to do. Now, uh, you know, you talked about um, participating in various activities and things like that. And teachers might think that, you know, students should be coming to class and listening to me and learning, right? I do think classroom etiquette is important, which has been lost during the COVID era. But how do you put those two things together? I am the first one to admit that over the decades, I think uh, the student-teacher connect is gone. And uh, and I don't want to say that outright. Many teachers love their students and want to do a lot. But students have become the last priority of teachers. Now, why are both the things happening? I think we have to understand the neoliberal context in which we are living. Think of the neoliberal economy. It pushes you into, uh, you know, the kinds of things that you want to do to make yourself job ready or employment ready. So you want to concentrate on that. The professor instead is pushed by the same neoliberal economy, which now has made our universities and institutes the neoliberal institute, where what are professors supposed to do? They are supposed to get grants, write papers constantly. So everyone is on their own treadmill. And which is, I think, the reason why uh, the students are you know, dissatisfied with how the professors are looking at them. And there is no uh, meeting ground at present. Teachers have lost the time and the space to have the time to spend with students because of the treadmill <coughs> they are on. But I want to you know, close my bit of it by making a suggestion, and I've been suggesting this for to various quarters for quite some time, that first of all, and I think this was something that Professor Sujipto uh, from Mechanical Engineering also pointed out, that since LHC was made, there is less contact with students, because teaching is in one building, and uh, professors are in blocks or in MS building. So uh, uh, classes used to be held in the blocks, now very rarely so. So there is no, you know, aate jate raste mein milna, khade hoke do minute baat karna. Wo bhi nahi hota. And I think, so what, LHC is there. It's not going to go anywhere. It has vast, humongous, unused spaces. And we haven't been able to do much about that. So what I have been saying is that we need to create more common spaces which are you know, friendly, welcoming. I even point to that space that is right across from Nest Cafe. 
it has a few ramshackle benches or but nothing else and you know look at the crowd at Nescafe and Namun it would be very happy to occupy that space and that's one place where teachers and students meet each other in an informal basis at least PhD students and uh, and I see that you know our focus is always again on the VTech students but entire MSc, PhD, half the student body is in that uh, and they also need to meet the students. Actually I was shocked you know a student came up to me and few years ago and he said ma'am in my four years of doing VTech I have never spoken with a professor one to one and I it really I can't forget that statement so I think you know the institute puts put some resources towards creating friendly spaces where people across this hierarchy of students and teachers can come together LSC can't have food and food is something that brings people together tea, coffee, whatever so uh, I mean this is something I wish institute authorities would put their head to and create those one last line that you know some of the research that we are doing in our project on gender and STEM has shown that the kind of uh, you know gendered uh, <coughs> architecture that we have which is a legacy of the fact that ours was a very male dominated institution as engineering institutions are but girls on one side, boys on the other side everything on the boys side, sports, sack, all the eatery and for girls it's like an effort you know to make it to that side so what our research has shown us that women are gaining far less from the educational experience on campus because of lack of interactions except in the academic uh, sector so I think space is very important we need to reimagine both uh, our campus space also outside the classroom yeah. and I think it will impact the friendliness of the student teacher relationships in the classroom also if we are able to do that I think I absolutely agree with what you said especially the part about everything being towards the voice also that really resonated with me but uh, yeah the students perspective on the journey so uh, I agree with what uh, Prof. Kaur said, right, about having more avenues for discussion because this gap that we're talking about, it starts from the first year itself when we have these really huge classrooms and we've come away from our homes for the first time. That is when uh, students start to see Prof. as, you know, these people that they can't approach, that they can't ask their doubts from or discuss their problems with. And this gap only increases as the years pass by because students when they come here they've been sold the idea of you know what an IT life would look like and when that idea does not align with what uh, professors expectations are from us so here uh, for example we're supposed to focus a lot on our courses study a lot and when students come here with this idea that you know they have they'll participate in a lot of sports activities and a lot of extracurriculars that is when and you know they have this idea that they're going to get an internship after two years which is prop which is not what this institute was all about right you're supposed to have uh, you're supposed to do different things but then students are sold this particular idea and when they chase these ideas this gap that we are talking about where students are not able to understand why their profs expect certain things from them and professors are not able to understand why students are not uh, as disciplined as they should have been so I think this is where open communication would really help so having more informal conversations with our professors where we are actually discussing why certain things are important to us and even where we can sometimes talk about the talk about how many courses we have how we're supposed to focus on each one of them and maybe professors can help explain to us why uh, you know certain things that they are doing are important for example there's this issue of attendance that keeps being discussed over and over again so it would be really good to have more conversations about things like these so that even if we don't reach a common ground we're able to understand each other better and have more empathy for the person on the other side of the classroom. I just wanted to say that uh, I'd like to thank all the students in the room because without you we wouldn't be teachers.
teachers day to all the teachers in this audience how many students are here excellent good to see so many students here um so i you know we heard a very interesting discussion and i would like to thank um, professor kaur professor supree and the two students bharat and ashna i think you brought out all the issues many of these are issues we can fix and we can fix them together if we have the will to do that and i think some of them you know how many students here from the who are student representatives cac cic okay i think we need to talk and we need to see so we talked about feedback we talked about reimagining the spaces that we have we talked about having contact and looking at connects right these are things we invite you to suggest what we should do and between the students and the faculty if we can get together we can figure out ways in which we can do things differently these challenges that you heard are not just unique to iit delhi they are affecting every global institution and but that doesn't mean that we can't solve them if we have the will to do that and i think today i just like to announce a couple of things one is we are in the next year when we have this teachers day function we will have a new curriculum and we are already discussing it we would like students to get engaged with how you would like to reimagine your curriculum and talk to the departments talk to your academic units the second thing the dean and the associate dean faculty have are going to spearhead an initiative for a teaching learning center at our institute and we are going to try and provide input so that we can improve teaching and learning at the institute so these are the two specific things on which we would like the suggestions of both the students as well as the faculty all the teachers who got the award today congratulations and we would like to i think you need to share the recipe or the you know the mantra you have for your success what is it that you do which you know Uh, excite students what is it that so that you know others can also follow that uh, and i think you know we all remember our teachers we all remember our good teachers so the the question of yes of course research gives you awards and recognition but teaching also gives you very significant recognition whether it is in the form of awards or whether when you go you know you are at an airport or you are at a railway station and someone comes and says you taught me in such and such year and it is something which makes us makes our lives you know it, it just this we are here to transform the lives of students and what we talked about in terms of diversity in terms of variation we have to make sure that every student in our classroom understands and it's not just the good students will anyway do well the and there's no question of good or bad it's just some people learn at different paces we need to figure out um, how we can actually enthuse students and cater to the different ways in which people learn and this is where we hope the teaching and learning center will help but most importantly i think teaching in and learning and enabling learning and talking to students and students students have given up on faculty members faculty members have given up on students to a to a reasonable extent we need to win that connect back so i hope on this teachers day if you are interested in the teaching and learning let us try to resolve let us try to work together put down your ideas we have many ideas today let's put down and let's make a difference and actually enhance our teaching and learning environment at the institute and i i think um, in both in all of this we do request students 
and faculty members to come and reimagine our learning environment so that we can actually create the future citizens that we want to see and that we can enable all our students. I think this is, to me, this is something that all of us should work towards and we are really keen that we can make more of a difference in your lives because we exist for the students. I mean, that's, that's very, that is very clear and that's the, the, and we need to figure out how we can actually fulfill the changing aspirations of our student community. Thank you.